Hello everyone, welcome back, and I'm Serge. And I'm Cern. And what are we going to be talking about this time, Dr. Boyd? So now we're going to talk about vascular access, and we use this for several different applications when it comes to point-of-care ultrasound. In the emergency setting, we use this to assess our vessels to make sure that they are patent and not thrombosed. And when we get difficult intravascular access or sampling, we will use this to find a vein or an artery that we can sample, whether it's arterial blood gas or venous blood gas, and to be able to make sure that we're actually accessing the correct vessel. So we will use this, for example, when we're doing our jugular uh, uh, vein placements or central lines for things like dialysis. So that's why we're going to use the vascular axis and the nice thing about the Clarius, again, we have a preset for this Dr. Shaloub. We're sitting on general abdomen now. You can see we're out at 10 centimeters. We can quickly go in. We can change that to either small organs or musculoskeletal. That'll get us down to a lower setting. And depending on how deep our vessel is, we'll adjust the settings from there. So in the case of Penny here, we've got a very, very superficial set of vessels. So we're going to start with a jugular. We'll start out at 2.4 centimeters and we'll make adjustments as needed. But we'll show you how we look for the vessels with our point of care ultrasound. And we're going to go ahead and make some adjustments once we see those. Yeah, that's really cool about these presets because it automatically will increase that frequency for you, which is what you need for superficial structures. That is pretty fantastic, Dr. Boyson. Ah, fantastic indeed, Dr. Shalhoub. So we'll put some alcohol on again. We're going to part the fur. I like to do my vascular access in short axis, so I tend to prefer the short axis over the long axis orientation when I'm doing my vascular access. So we'll actually come in at the jugular furrow, we'll part the fur, and we'll see if we can pick up the vessels. Okay. And so we'll just turn the gain up a little bit, make some adjustments to our depth setting. So here you can see I've got two vessels in short axis duct loop. And I can't necessarily always tell which one's an artery, which one's a vein. So if I push down on the probe, I can see that I can collapse the vein. So here you go, I collapse that vein, almost completely gone. Whereas the uh, carotid artery that you see, that circular structure that's pulsing, that tends to stay visible. So we can quickly assess this. We can look for that jugular, we can look for that uh, carotid artery. And if we're doing vascular access or sampling, I can in short access slide along those structures and I can actually feed a catheter into that jugular vein, for example. So I can mm. see the jugular vein there coming back again. Take a little bit of pressure off the probe, there's that jugular vein, I can feed a catheter to that. Yep. The other thing we can do, if we've got a really edematous limb, or we've got, uh, for example, those Sharpays, those animals that have very thick skin, that's hard for us to see that uh, vessel when we're trying to do a cephalic or even a saphenous, we can also use ultrasound guidance to help us with that. Penny's got a very, very fit dog, so her vessel is going to be very, very superficial. So this is going to be a little bit more challenging for us to uh, identify and to show you, but we can use, especially when we've got patients that have edema or very, very uh, thick uh, skin, then we can often find that uh, vessel. So here you see we've got a vessel that we now have uh, in our screen. So we're sitting a little to the side there, but that's our cephalic. And if I push down and make that collapse, I relax, I can see that uh, cephalic vein. So again, in Penny, it's a very, very superficial structure. So this isn't one that we would have to use ultrasound guidance to help us with, but you can see how we can find that vein and we can actually put pressure on, confirm that it's a vein, it collapses. We can look at it in both short or long axis. And if you're really good at doing long axis, there we go. We can often put a catheter in in long axis. My preference though is definitely to go short axis when it comes to looking for that vessel. So yeah. And we have to remember, Dr. Boysen, the scanning surface area here is quite thin. That's why we see all the artifacts on either side there, because that is truly all we have to scan there, because she's such a thin dog, yeah, so a the, fit dog. That vessel's at the peak, so I can only get the contact right over the vessel on either yeah. side, because the vessel's standing up, I lose it. But when you've got edema or you've got a very thick skin, then you can actually get better contact. Mm -hmm. and you can see this is only at a centimeter thick, and we're probably sitting at about 0.25 centimeters. Uh, depth that we're actually located where the center of this vessel is. Yep. So it's, uh, that's our vascular axis though. We can slide along that, make sure that that's patent, that we don't have any thrombosis there. And when we have edema or a thick uh, skin, then we can use ultrasound guidance to actually walk a needle through that. The more edematous it is, the thicker the skin is, the easier it is to actually use ultrasound guidance to find that vessel and hit it. Or a chubby dog. That's also very hard sometimes to feel that vessel. Absolutely, and we've done that again for central line placement in our mm -hmm. patients that are very uh, difficult to get access to. Our technicians are also trained to put arterial catheters in the dorsal pedal artery as well. Yeah. So that is vascular access using point-of-care ultrasound. Something really cool, really neat, and very helpful.